Hello, hope you're doing well. This is a follow-up to my previous video, which was an introduction to Bash if you are completely new. Uh, so if you haven't seen that and you're completely new, you can go watch that. Uh, we're just going to pick up where that left off, so that was just some basic file navigation. Um, today we're just going to start with the find command. So if I ls here, um, I've got some images in this directory. I would like to see if any of these are over um, 1 megabyte in size. So I can do find and we can explicitly tell it what directory to search in. Uh, it's automatically just going to search in the directory you're in, but if I want to, I can explicitly tell it to search in this directory. If you recall, a dot just represents the directory you're currently in uh, and double dots is the previous or parent directory. Uh, and I can explicitly tell it I want to search for files uh, rather than directories or symbolic links, which directories would be D, symbolic links would be L. I just want to search for files though, and then I can add on size, and then I want to do greater than one meg here. And we have one picture that's greater than one meg. Great, I could also do a minus here, and that's going to say less than, and I could do less than two gigs, for example. All right, these are all less than two gigs. Um, okay, we can, we can look at the man of find here just to read a little bit more about it, and it's searching for files in a directory hierarchy. There's a lot of options for it, but here's a really common use case. What if you want to find files that match, you know, a certain type or a certain string and you want to move them to another directory all at once? So what we can do is we can just find and we can still, we could explicitly tell it, you know, this directory, but we don't have to since we're already in this directory. Um, and I'm going to do dash i name. Now I'm doing i name rather than just name here because we have .jpg on several of these, but we also have this capital .jpg. So iName is going to say, uh, match my string that I'm giving it here, but ignore the case. So when I'm going to say match star.jpg, match everything that comes before a .jpg, uh, iName is just going to say, yeah, well, that also includes a capital JPG. So that's going to match all four of those photo files. And then I can use dash exec, which is going to execute this command that I give it, move, uh, the curly brackets just say, uh, take the matches that find found. So we're going to move those into my directory that I want to put them in here. And I can end that with a backslash, a semicolon. And that didn't give any errors. It just moved those into the directory. So we can just cd into that and ls and our photos are now here. Great. So there are a couple more important options with find that I just want to bring up briefly. Uh, so first of all, we have m time and a time. And that's going to be modified time and access time. So if I were to do dash m time five, that's going to search for files modified within the past five days. Uh, same thing for a time, just access within the past five days. So those are those. Uh, we can also use slash our dash perm, which is going to search for a specific permission number. So if you recall, when we did uh, ls dash la, that does tell us we have read write files here, but uh, that doesn't give us an actual number and permissions. Uh, are done with a numbered system. So what we can we can do here is just stat, uh, and we can just look at, uh, I don't know, birdphoto.jpg. So if we stat birdphoto.jpg, uh, here's our permission number that we need, 0644, that's permission 0644. Uh, yep, it's got read, write, etc. Great, so we can now do find uh, dash perm 0644, and we have four files with that permission. So that is the find command. We also have the locate command and the locate command functioned a little bit differently. It actually just searches from an existing database uh, and that database updates every so often. Uh, so if it isn't finding your files, you might have to do a sudo update db. We'll just give it a try here real quick and see if it works. So if I just did locate dash i uh, bird photo dot jpg, um, Okay, great, that did work. So I didn't have to update the database this time. Um, and that's just gonna give you, it's, it's just going to locate the file for you. It's just gonna give you the path of the file. So if you know you have a file somewhere, but you don't know where it is, you can use the command locate. All right, so a little bit more about disks and drives. We can use the command lsblk, and that's gonna list block devices. So listing the drives currently in my system. Uh, that's going to tell me the name of the drive, uh, any partitions on it, uh, the type, you know, the mount points. Great. So we have LSBLK, but that's just giving me a full drive size. So my root partition here, for example, that's, it's a 50 gig partition, but 
uh, I actually want to know how much of it is used. So we can do that with the DF command, which stands for disk uh, file system here. That's going to just report file system space usage. Again, lots of flags we can use, but here are just some basic flags for now. Uh, if I just want to DF on my root directory, well, as with ls, we're actually just going to want an h here to put it into a human readable format. Uh, and great, we have some basic info. So used, available, I've used 66% of it, it's mounted on the slash, great. Um, we can also just give it uh, an exact block size to use if we wanted to. So we could do just dash b for block size and then m, So and that'll just give it to us in megs, which in this case really isn't helpful, but you can specify that if you wanted to use it to see um, in a specific block size. Okay, we also have a command called du, uh, which has a slightly different usage here. So first of all, we could just du on a file, and I'm going to once again want it human readable, and we can just do it on that birdphoto.jpg. Okay, great. So that's du, but we can also do du-sh, uh, which is going to s for summarize, and then put that in a human readable format, and I want to look at my home directory here. It's going to take a second, but that's just going to tell us a summary of how much is used. Great. Summary, 634 gigs used. So that's very similar to df, but just a slightly, slightly different command there, and it's got some other flags that can be useful. Um, all right, so that's enough about file systems. We have a couple of fun little commands here. So we have date, first of all. Okay, great. That's just spitting out the date. Um, but you, you see actually on my status bar, I have that in a special format here. So what we can do, if we just go into the man page for date, um, we have all sorts of formatting here that we can do. Uh, just for an example, I can do date plus percent A, that's going to spin out, all right, it's Sunday. Uh, but I actually have in my status bar here, I have Sunday comma. So what I can do is I can put this output in quotes here and then I can add on a comma and then I believe it's a B and then E for what I have. Okay, perfect. Yep. And so putting it in quotes just lets me add in that comma that I wanted to add in. Okay, um, great. So that's the date command. Uh, what other commands are you? So we also have uname, which is just going to tell us uh, about our uh, system information here. So what's this? what this will usually be useful for is uh, learning about what kernel you're on. So I could do, well, first of all, I could do uname-o. And I am indeed on GNU slash Linux. I'm not just Linux, GNU slash Linux, importantly, of course. Uh, but I can do uname-r here, uh, which is going to be a pretty important command if you need to check what kernel you're on. So I'm on 6.10.10, arch kernel. Uh, so that's helpful just if you need to check for like bugs, if your specific, specific kernel version has a bug um, and you're not sure which kernel you're on, that is what uname is generally used for. Okay, um, great. So one more fun command. We have the cal command, and that's just going to give us a calendar right here in our terminal. Uh, we could do cal-n, and then we can specify how many months we want to see it for. So I can do a cal for the next 12 months. I can also just give it a year. So we could do a calendar if we wanted to for the year zero. Oh, sorry. I guess it has to be the year one. Okay, and great. That's a, that's a calendar for 0001. Uh, but what would really be useful is a 2025 calendar here. Um, and yeah, this is what the calendar is going to look like in 2025. Obviously, there's a few more options you can do. Uh, you can set like whether you want Monday or Sunday to be the primary day uh, here, etc. Okay, great. So that's calendar. All right, back to something a little bit more important, uh, processes. So I'm actually going to open up a process here just to have that as an example. So I'm just gonna less into a file. And uh, okay, great, here's here's some text in my text file. We are in less right now. So if I wanna look for the process ID of less, I can do PID of less. Great, so that is the process ID of less. And I can just go ahead and kill that right now if I wanted. Uh, I can just highlight that and then paste that in with the middle click. Um, that's something, I don't know, it seems like a few people don't know that. You can just highlight something and then just use middle click and that'll paste. Um, just saying that, just in case you didn't know that. Anyways, that just killed that process. Uh, but we, what we can also do is we can use the command ps, so let's just man of ps real quick. Report a snapshot of current processes. 
Uh, and what I can do is PS uh, with the flags A, U, and X. So what A is going to say is report all users' processes, not just my users. Uh, U is going to be for user-oriented output, so it's just going to give us a little bit more information. Uh, and then X is for processes without a controlling terminal. So uh, daemon or background processes, we kind of don't really need any of those flags in this particular example, but those are usually flags that you would run or run with the PS command if you're just trying to look at processes. Uh, and I'm going to pipe that into grep right here because I want to search for the process less. And, uh, well, you can see we actually have two processes here, and that's because one of them was when I actually ran the grep command. Well, it is grepping for the word less, so that's going to show up there too. But I can once again just take this PID number and kill it if I wanted to. And that has killed our process there. And if you are on Linux, and particularly a any flavor of Linux that has system D, uh, in my video covering what to do after you've installed Arch Linux, I did discuss more about the htop command as well as system CTL and how to use that. Uh, so you can visit that for some more in-depth information on system D. Uh, but moving right along here, uh, the next thing I want to go over is just IP address. How do you view your local IP address? Um, and it's just IP ADDR. Uh, here's my local IP address. Oh no, please no hack. Uh, don't worry, your, your local IP address is just on your local network. So if I wanted to SSH into my PC here from a laptop uh, on my local network, that is what this IP is for, or anything you're doing locally. Okay, so just a few more commands here. Uh, what is the command curl going to do? Curl is going to make network requests from the command line. So that can be particularly helpful um, if we want to, for example, we could uh, use a fun little website here called cheat.sh. So I can curl cheat.sh slash curl. That's going to give me a fun little cheat sheet about curl. Uh, I can pipe that into less. That's going to download it. Okay, and I just got my cheat sheet telling me all about the curl command. Uh, that's a fun little site. There's also a site for fetching weather, and you can see I have my weather in my status bar here. So I'm using this site, which is curl. Uh, it's wttr.in. Uh, but I, I actually want to put it in a file real quick just to demonstrate that you can. So I'm going to put dash o, and then I'm going to put it into weather.txt. Uh, and I want wttr.in. By default, it's going to go from my public IP address, which I don't really want to dox myself here, so I'm just going to get the weather for Svalbard, since um, I, I happen to not live in Svalbard. Uh, so I can now just last weather.txt, and, and well, it looks like it's pretty cold there, which to be expected, right? Great, so that is curl, and then one final command to leave you with, which is a command that is probably up there in importance with man. Uh, which is history. And if I just, if I clear this real quick and just do history right now, uh, that's going to give me all of the commands I just did. And I can also just type that into grep, so I could just grep, um, I don't know, ls, not not really that helpful. But yes, we, we can just go through and use history, grep ls, etc. Okay, great. So that is pretty much everything for this video. If there's any commands here that you think I should have covered that I didn't, leave a comment and I will make a future video covering them. Uh, I'm still going to be making a video about operators in Bash as well as some Bash scripting. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. So yeah, hope this helped you out. Hope you learned something and see you next time. Peace.